Hello everybody, it's Itiri back again with another video. Alright guys, Carlos Carlitos Alcaraz, the future of tennis, the very very hyped, super talented player, the 19 years old from Spain, has just won his first ever Grand Slam title. Oh my dear God, how we tennis fans, how we tennis maniacs been waiting for this moment to finally come because we have, all, we have said this so many years, who will come through? Who will take a big step? Will it be Tsitsipas? Will it be Medvedev, even though Medvedev is a Grand Slam champion? Will it be Team, even though the team is a Grand Slam champion? Will it be Zvera? Will it be Berrettini? Will it be Rublev? You name it. Nobody of those players I just mentioned, Felix Yalasibe, Denis Shapovalov, I can mention so many, so many of them. Nobody of them has finally has taken that big step, at least not at this young of an age, because team and Medvedev, all, all respect to them, they are Grand Slam champions, but they didn't win their Grand Slam titles at this very young age, like Kalitos Alcaraz is doing as a teenager last time, a teenager won a Grand Slam title, was... 17 years ago when Rafael Nadal won his first ever Grand Slam title at French Open back in 2005 as 19 years old. And now, 17 years later, his countryman from Spain, Carlos Alcaraz, is doing the same exactly achievement and becoming a Grand Slam champion as 19 years old of age. This is huge, my test all around the world. Because, all respect to Nadal, Nadal won his first ever Grand Slam title at a very young age, as 19 years old. Djokovic also won his first ever Grand Slam title as 20 years old of age. So, he was one year older than Carlos Alcaraz. And Roger Federer also won his first ever Grand Slam title. Not very old, but older than Carlos Alcaraz. I remember Roger was 21 years old, 21 years uh, of uh, 21 years old when Roger Federer won his first ever Grand Slam title. So, Carlos Alcaraz is in the same league as Rafael Nadal. He wins his first ever Grand Slam title as young as Rafael Nadal did 17 years ago, and Carlos Alcaraz is doing a better job than both Djokovic, with one year younger than Djokovic in winning his first ever Grand Slam title. Djokovic doing that as 20 years old and doing a better job than Roger Federer when Roger Federer won his first ever Grand Slam title back in Wimbledon 2003 as 21 years old of age. Djokovic as 20 years old of age when Djokovic won his first ever Grand Slam title at Astral Open back in 2008. So, big congratulations to Carlos Alcaraz. Man, I did a video for, uh, about Carlos Alcaraz a couple of months ago at French Open when I said Carlos Alcaraz is the real deal. We have been hyping this dude for a couple of months now. He, we know that he won two more 2000 titles earlier this year when he won Miami uh, and actually defeated the same dude like he did at the US Open Final, Casper uh, uh, Ruud, earlier this year when, when, he won, when he won his first ever Master 1000 title earlier this year, Carlos Alcaraz. Uh, and then he won also Madrid on clay where he actually... Uh, it was even a bigger achievement in Madrid, according to me, because he, he defeated two of the big three members back to back on his way to that Madrid title. When he defeated Rafa Nadal in the quarterfinal, and then when he defeated Novak Djokovic in the semifinal, and then completely demolished Alexander Sasha Zverev in the final. So, but now, this is, is huge. This is big, my tennis fans all around the world. All respect to most of the titles. But Carlos Alcaraz is winning his biggest title of his young career so far. He's lifting the Grand Slam title. And he's doing that as 19 years old of age. And he's doing that as a kind of a big favorite. Because he was the number three seed here, if I'm not mistaken. So he had a lot of expectations on his wings. And he delivered. I said that I had Nadal as my number one favorite. I will be honest with you. I didn't quite believe he crazy much in Carlos Alcaraz coming into this to the US Open tournament because he didn't quite impress me on he did quite impress on me both in Montreal and Cincinnati where he lost pretty early in both two in both two tournaments so I didn't quite have huge expectations on him I will be honest with you guys I will not sit here and lie because I hate lying but when Nadal lost against Francis Tiafoe in the fourth round 
according to me, very uh, surprisingly, I didn't expect Rafa to lose and to go away like that against Francis Tiafoe, especially in that fourth set where he was a break up and was 3-1 up, but Rafa Nadal lost five straight games against Francis Tiafoe and was completely out of gas, according to me, he looked really tired. I had two names that I thought could win this tournament. Carlos Alcaraz or Nick Kyrgios. And in the end of, of the day, I was right. It was Carlos Alcaraz who lifted the trophy. And before, and in, in my preview final, I actually believed in Carlos Alcaraz. Uh, I said that Carlos will win in four sets. Uh, so it went exactly that way that I predicted. I, must, I, I, I was expecting Carlos to win. Even though I had a ton of respect for Casper Ruud. I thought that Casper Ruud will take his first ever set against uh, Carl Serkis because the other two encounters that they've played each other, they've faced each other two times before, never, not in slam events, but in other events. Carl Serkis has won both of, the, both of those two encounters in straight sets. So, Carl, so Kasper Ruud has never managed to take one set from Carl Alcaraz in the past. Uh... I thought that that will be a change now, this time around, and I was right. Casper took his first ever set against Carlos Alcaraz. Because Casper Root has taken big steps in his tennis. He has really improved his weaknesses, like, like back, backhand, like returns. And, uh, and what did Carlos Alcaraz do so, so superior good against Casper Root the last time they faced each other in that man in the final? Carlos Alcaraz completely destroyed Casper Ruud in the serve plus foreign game, in the serve plus winner game. He was in the short rally length. Carlos Alcaraz completely destroyed Casper Ruud. Casper Ruud didn't stand a chance against Carlos Alcaraz in that Miami final in the short rally length. It, it was a completely different story this time around. Casper Ruud really challenged Carlos Alcaraz in the short rally length, and I will come to that now. If you look at the sh uh, zero to four shots, it was really, it was not like Carlos was destroying Casper Ruud in the zero to four shot. Carlos won 84 of those points, Casper won 79 of those points in the zero to four shot. So, Carlos Alcaraz only wins five more points than Casper Ruud in the zero to four shots. 84 from Carlos Alcaraz, winning 0 to, 4 shots, 0 to 4 shots of length, and 79 of the points Casper Ruud wins to 0 to 4 shots length. So only 5 more points does Carlos win in the 0 to 4 shots length. If you look at the 5 to 8 shots of length, even there, Casper Ruud is doing a great job compared that with the Miami Open final. Carlos wins 30 of those points, Casper wins 27 of those points in the 5 to 8 shots length, length rallies. So, only 3 more points, Carlos uh, Alcaraz wins more than Casper Root in the 5 to 8 shots length rallies. 30 to, from, for, for Carlos and 27 for Casper Root. The only length rally where Casper Root actually defeats Carlos Alcaraz is the nine plus shots length rallies. Actually, Casperu does a better job there with 16 points winning in the nine to plus shots length rallies and Carlos with 30 in, in, in 30 of those points winning in the nine to plus shots length rallies. But you know my tennis fans, all, so, so, so Casper wins three more points than Carlos Alcaraz in the nine plus length rally uh, uh, exchanges. So he does a better job there, Casper Root. But you know my tennis fans all, all around the world. You barely, almost never win tennis matches just because you have dominated or just because you have been the better player in the nine plus shot length rallies. You almost never win the tennis matches just because of that. And we have this match approve of that as well. Casper won the 9 plus shots of rallies more than, uh, uh, more than Carlos, but he lost the match. Why? Because Casper Root lost the 0 to 4 shots, shots rally lengths, and Casper Root lost the 5 to 8 shots rally lengths, and in the end lost the tennis match. 
winning those short rallies and those middle rallies are huge, huge key in tennis, my tennis friends all around the world. So if I can mention three keys why Carlos Alcaraz won this final, if I can mention three, maybe four, maybe, I, I cannot forget the fourth one, man, I cannot forget. It is Carlos Alcaraz serving really good, according to me, he landed 64% first serve scene, that is good, did 14 aces and only three double falls, Carlos Alcaraz. Uh, so that is what that was one key. He served good, Carl Salkras, according to me. He hit his forehand really good, Carl Salkras. He really did. Especially because the tactic from Kasparud was clear. He was attacking Carlos Alcaraz for a backhand side in every cost. Carlos Alcaraz, Kasparud was so afraid from Carl Salkras for forehand. Which I can understand because Carlos Alcaraz's forehand is really huge and great. Really superior shot. One of the greatest forehand in the world at the current moment, Carlos Alcaraz. Uh, so Casper Root, of course, knew this. He had done his homework. So he was penetrating Carlos Alcaraz back and side all the time. More or less all the time. But what did Carlos do? He did his homework. He knew this was coming. So Carlos was doing a lot of forehand uh, running, running around forehands. He was going around and to try to avoid his backhand in every cost just to hit forehands. All in all, Carlos Alcaraz actually hit 300, 320 ground strokes. All ground strokes counted beside the serve, the serve not, but all the other ground strokes are counted here. Uh, so Carlos Alcaraz hit th 370 ground strokes and he hit 195 forehands and he hit 125 backhands. So Carlos Alcaraz hits 70 more forehands than backhands. Is this a coincidence? Absolutely not. He was going a lot. He was going a around a lot of times when the ball was hit for when the ball was on the backhand side for him to hit backhands, but he was not feeling super comfortably, he was not feeling super uh, calm in hitting backhands, so he was avoiding to hit his backhand as much as possible, Carlos Alcaraz, and that's why he hit 195 forehands and 125 backhands. So all in all, Carlos Alcaraz hits 70 more forehand shots than backhand shots. That is not a coincidence. So, Kasparu did a really good tactical game here, but Carlos Alcaraz did a great job in going around a lot of times and hitting forehands. So, key for Carlos Alcaraz to winning this match, he served great, he hit his forehand, his, his uh, uh, forehand, going around forehands really, really good. He was really clutch at the net. We should not forget his net game. Man, he approached the net 45 times, Carlos Alcaraz, and he was winning 34 of those approaches. 34 of those net approaches he was winning. 45 times he, was, he, he approached the net, that is a lot, and he was winning 34 of those net approaches. So he was missing, he was losing only 11 points at the net out of 45 times that he attacked the net. He was 76% in winning points at the net. That is a huge key as well. That is the number three key. Number fourth key, this should not be forgotten, his clutchness. Man, he was clutch at the third set. He was, he was, he was, he was two sets point down in that 12th game of the third set. That was a huge game. That was a huge game for Casper Root and Carlos Alcaraz. Kasper had two set points in that 12th game in the third set, in that 6-5 game where Carlos Alcaraz was fighting for his life to take the match to a tie-break. If Kasper would have converted one of those two set points and Carlos Alcaraz would have been forced to go to his fourth straight five-set battle, because we all know Carlos Alcaraz played a five-set battle in the fourth round against Marin Cilic. We all know Carlos Alcaraz played a five-set battle in the quarterfinal against the uh, Yannick Sinner. And we all know that Carlos Alcaraz played the five-set battle against Francis Tiafo in the semi-final. If Kasper Ruud would have converted one of those two, two set points in that 12th game in the third set, Carlos Alcaraz would have been forced to go into his fourth straight 
five set battle in this US Open tournament 2022 edition. And who knows what would have happened, even though the Carlos Alcaraz is a physical beast. His stamina is out of this world. So I, I, sh I still would have actually favored Carlos Alcaraz to win, personally. But it was a key, key game, that 12 game of the third set. It was really a key for both of the players. Carlos Alcaraz somehow did a Houdini escape and took himself to a tiebreak. And, and in the tiebreak, he was, Carlos, uh, Kasper Ruth was played a horrible tiebreak. He won the first point, and then Carlos Alcaraz won seven straight point consecutive. After Casper won, was one love in the, uh, the tiebreak, then Carlos just w went and won, went and w won seven, seven straight points and won the third set tiebreak, six, seven in the sets and seven, one in the points. After a lot of uh, help from Casper Root, especially Casper Root's backhand completely let him down in that tiebreak. Uh, he was hitting a lot of backhand sh uh, shanks and was hit doing a lot of backhand amphosteros in that third set tiebreak. And after that, it was the belief from Casper Root kind of, of disappeared. He, he even said it himself after the match. He said that when I lost the tiebreak, I was still thinking about the tiebreak in the fourth set and my belief was not as crazy high that I could win the match as it, as it was in the first three sets. So, uh, and then the fourth set, uh, Carlos Alcaraz really, he was really superior, so he was really solid. He didn't face one single break point against him in the fourth set. He had one break point opportunity in the fourth set and he capitalized in that only one break point he had in the middle of the fourth set and then never, never looked back after breaking Kasper Root's serve in that fourth set and won the fourth set in the end 6-3. All in all, Carlos Alcaraz wins this match 6-4, winning the first set, then loss, losing the second, 6-2, Kasper Ruud wins his first ever set against Carlos Alcaraz, and then, like I said, the third set, that was the huge key of the match. If Kasper would have won the third set, maybe he would have won the match. He maybe would have won the match, because all, at the end of the day, Kas, uh, Carlos Alcaraz actually didn't want many more points than Kasper Ruud. All the points counted here. But Ka, uh, Carlos Alcaraz showed really clutch Clutch, he was, he was really clutch in the third set and saved those two set points he had against him and won that th third set tiebreak, like I said, 7-6, seven, 7-1 seven, uh, in all points uh, counted in that tiebreak. And then in the fourth set, really, Casper uh, kind of uh, didn't believe that he can win the match anymore and lost that fourth set, 6-3. So, Carlos Alcaraz comes through after 3 hours and 20 minutes, 6-4, 2-6, 7-6, he wins the last fourth set, a uh, 6-3. Big congratulations to Carlos Alcaraz for winning his first ever Grand Slam title, and it will be not his last. If he's healthy, I don't think we will get a new Juan de Martin Del Potro, because when Del Potro won his first ever Grand Slam title, and his only Grand Slam title, and he was pretty young as, as well, he was 20 years old, I personally believe that Del Potro would not finish his career with only one Grand Slam title, which he did. But he had had a lot, ton of injuries. He has had a lot of bad luck with, with injuries, Juan Martin Del Potro. If Carlos Alcaraz doesn't have the same kind of a career as Del Potro with a lot of injuries, I never think that Carlos Alcaraz will stop here and win only one Grand Slam title in his career. If we look at, if we look at other stats in the match, like I said, Carlos did did 14 aces only, and only three double faults. That is great number of aces from Carlos Alcaraz's racket. And Kasper Root did only four aces and two double faults. And Kasper Root is maybe the better server than Carlos Alcaraz. Maybe, uh, according to many. Uh, not, but he, he was for sure not in this match. Carlos Alcaraz landed 64% for Sarsin. He wins 74 of, of the points behind his first serve. 74%, that is a great number. Kasper Root, he landed... Uh, 61% first serve in and won 66% behind his first serve. 66% behind his first serve. Uh, so there you have Carlos uh, Alcaraz dominates Kasper Root in winning points behind first serve. Why? Because he was winning the short rally lengths and the middle rally lengths. Uh, if you look winning points behind second serve, actually Kasper Root does a better job. 
Kasparut wins 65% of the points behind second serve and Carlos Alcaraz actually wins only 51% of the points behind the second serve. Why? Because Kasparut actually was winning the long rally lengths, like I said in the beginning of the, my video. And that's why also Kasparut was winning more points behind second serves. Break point conditions. Kasper, uh, Carlos Alcaraz uh, had 11 break punch opportunities, he converted in 3 of them and Kasper Ruud had 10 break punch opportunities and he also converted in 3 of them. So they break each other's serve 3 times each. Win uh, uh, winners, Kasper, uh, Carlos Alcaraz he did 55 winners and, all, and 41 unforced errors. So uh, Carlos Alcaraz does 14 more winners than Afrosteros. That is a great number. It is always great when you do much more winners than Afrosteros, which was the case in this match for Carlos Alcaraz with 14 more winners than Afrosteros. Kasparud also did a good job in, in, in that category. He did 37 winners and 29 Afrosteros. So Kasparud does 8 more winners than Afrosteros. Uh... And if you look all the points won here, like I said, actually Carlos Alcaraz wins 127 points in the entire match and Kasper Ruud wins 122 points in the entire match. So Carlos Alcaraz actually wins only 5 more points than Kasper Ruud, despite that the match was 4 sets. The match never went to the full distance in 5 sets. So that is a proof to us that Kasper Ruud actually was not that far away from Carlos Alcaraz. He really was not. Like I said, if he would have capitalized in one of his, in one of his two set points that he had in the third set, he maybe would have won this match. Maybe my tennis fans all around the world. It would not have been impossible for Kasper Ruud winning this match if he would have taken one of those two huge, huge points in the match which was in that third set tiebreak when Kasparut Cal has had two set points in Carlos Alcaraz serve. That should not be that should not be forgotten to mention in Carlos Alcaraz serve. So he, he didn't have those set points in his own serve, Kasparut. And I should not forget the net 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 game. I mentioned that earlier in the video. Carlos Alcaraz's net approaches was really unbelievably good. Like I said, he approached the net forty five times and won thirty four of those net approaches. He only lost 11 points out of 45 net approaches that he had. Uh, that was 76% in winning points at, at the net from Carlos Alcaraz. Kasper didn't do the same great good job at the net. He also approached the net. Uh, I believe he approached the net 36 times, uh, Kasper Ruud, and won 23 of those net approaches. 23 of those points at the net, Kasper Ruud wins. So he loses 13, uh, 13 of net approaches, 13 points of the net approaches. That is, uh, that Kasper Ruud attacked the net. That is 64%. So, Carlos Alcaraz dominates Kasper Ruud at the net as well. And they actually asked Carlos Alcaraz, you was attacking the net a lot of times. And you, I, I could see that why. He said that I didn't feel that I was dominating the baseline rallies. I feel that Kasper Ruud was handling me, was doing a better job from the baseline than what I did. Uh, and you can see the stats as well. I, I believe that if you look all the baseline rallies uh, stat, I believe that Kasper Ruud was actually doing a better job from the baseline. He was winning 45% of the points from the baseline, 45%, and uh, Carlos Alcaraz was winning 43% of the points from the baseline. So Kasper Ruud did, did a better job with two more, he did a two more better job, two more, more percents better job than Carlos Alcaraz from the baseline. Uh, he just could, he, he was little, little uh, better from the baseline than Carlos Alcaraz. And Carlos Alcaraz, he could see that. Carlos Alcaraz is not a one-dimensional one player a la Andre Rublev. Andre, Andre Rublev doesn't have a play, plan B or plan C. He doesn't have. Carlos Alcaraz has. He saw that Kasper Ruud, 
He's doing a better job from baseline. He's taking me from the baseline, not maybe with much, but with enough. And this enough can be enough for him to win the match. So I will attack the net, which he did very, very successfully. Carlos Alcaraz. And in the end, won the match in four sets. Big congestion to Carlos Alcaraz for his first ever Grand Slam title for an absolutely amazing tennis tournament, amazing US Open achievement for his and becoming the youngest Grand Slam champion in 17 years since Rafa Nadal won his first ever Grand Slam title as a teenager back in 2005 French Open. Now, Carlos Alcaraz is doing the same 17 years later and now becoming the new world number one, a very deserving world, the new world number one. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you next time. Peace.